Good morning. Today we will take the 2D reinforced T section that we defined previously and we will apply the Saphir properties in a way that we can compute the temperatures as shown on this picture. So the first thing to do is to start GM Saphir here. I double click and I got the window. I will expand a little bit here the window with the messages. I go into file, open recent files, and I got here the file that was called 2D Thermal Geo that we built previously. Here it is. So we first have a look on the Saphir properties. We are in a thermal 2D problem type. These two lines are just for commands. The parameter theta for time integration, initial temperature. Here the time print we will print every 30 seconds, let's say, until 900. We don't want to run a torsion analysis at that stage. We want to use the new feature to use the, diag the diagonal version of the capacity matrix. Here are the coordinates of the node line and the shear center. Here is the window for the name of the input file. We will give the same name as the geo file to the thermal.in. The name could be different. We will use the new feature in the thermal analysis of a comeback. Uh, the time step minimum would be one second. And here the time step where we start would be, say, 10 seconds until 900 and the maximum time step might be 20 if it increases during the computation. We use the feature make TEM so the computation is for beam section and we use curves and we don't use a local fire model. So these are for the Saphir properties. Now something new we go back in geometry and we will add some physical groups add first we will add curves and the physical group has to be given a name and here we will give an exposed as a name and we will select the curves which are not exposed to the fire and they're in fact this line and this line so the physical group contains two elementary entities, here two curves. I finished the selection, so I click, I type, so E. And now this window has changed. What kind of property do I want? Not a flux, but a frontier. It's predefined, it could be user defined. And it's not the ISO curve, it's the F20 that I apply up there. So I click Add, and it should be here. If I close this window and I come here, View Frontier, I see my frontiers have been added. OK. Now I need another physical group, which is also a curve. And I will call this physical group X Post. I select the lines, these lines, and the idea, the good thing with the physical group is that I could add more lines into the group later on, but now I'm happy with this, so I type E, and if I define here that this is a frontier constraint, it's predefined, it's the ISO curve, Later on, if I change my mind, I could change the curve and it would be applied not to one elementary entity, but to all elementary entities here to all curves which belong to the physical group. So I can add this physical group. I can close the box. And now if I want to view the frontier, I see all my frontier as I want it. So clean. Next thing is to add some physical groups, which are now surfaces. As a first name, I will 
create a group which I will call bar S. And the S is for me in my terminology surface. I have to select the surfaces. Here is one, and here is another one. So these two objects belong now to the physical group which I called bars. I'm happy with my selection, so I type E. Now to this to this physical group, I have to add a material. And here I have to understand that at this stage I have no material defined. So I cannot apply a surface material. I have to come here to new material definition. I have to create or to define a material in the model. So new material definition. It does not belong to insulation but to metal. It's not steel EC3, it would be steel EC2. Here are the thermal property, convection, convection, emissivity. And here I have to give the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio of this material. And they will be used later on if I make a torsion analysis. I have to give a name to this material and I will call it steel M. And the M here is to remind me that this is the name of the material. If I click here, Add Update, I have to do it twice. You see that here, this window has appeared. Now, this is a new material which is available and that I can allocate to my physical group. And that's what I will do. I come back here. And now, it's not a new material definition. I will allocate a surface material. Which material? Steel M. And I click Add Update. And it is now allocated. If I view my materials, the material appear here. So I will do the same for the concrete. So I want to add a physical group, which is surface. I have to give a name. So the name will be concrete S for the concrete surface. I have to select this surface and this surface. They bo both belong to the physical group. The selection has been finished. I type E and I come here again to this window. I could now allocate the material steel M to my physical group, but that's not the material I want. So I come here to new material definition. It's not a metal, it belongs to the group of concrete. I will use this one, Conc EN 2020. I have the thermal properties, mass, moisture content, coefficient of convection, relative emissivity. And here again, I have to give the Young modulus and the Poisson ratio of this material if they have to be used for a torsion analysis. It's a new material, so I need a new name. And the new name will be Concrete M, because it's a material. And I add, update, I check. Look here, it has not been added, so I click again. Sometimes I have to click twice for a reason I don't understand. But now I can confirm that these two materials have been created. I can come back here. It's not new material definition anymore. It's surface material. What surface material will I give? The material concrete M. And I click Add. Now, if I come to view materials, I see that on these two elementary entities, the, these two surfaces which belong to the physical group, the material concrete M has been allocated. That's fine. Now, I can go to the mesh here. I click on 2D and a mesh has been created with triangular elements. It's a little bit rough, so I will click on Refine by Splitting once and maybe once again. 
So of course we will have to learn how to manage, how to handle the mesh to make it finer where we want or cruder in other places. That's theory of GMSH. Okay, here I click on recombine and my triangles will be transformed into rectangles or quadrilateral elements. So that's my mesh. You see here everything goes well. No message has been written in red color. So I think I'm all right. Here I see the two materials which I have created. Uh, they could disappear if I don't want to see that. And I think now everything is okay to click here on create Saphir in file. And the file apparently has been created, which I will check by coming in the Explorer. It's here in the tutorial. The file 2D terminal in has been created. And you see here the file 2D terminal geo and 2D terminal G4S. I can open the file just to be sure. See how it looks. Looks fine. You see the new command come back in the terminal analysis. The new command diac kappa also in the terminal analysis. I can go to the end, check my materials. They look fine. Okay. So we want to run the case. I have prepared here, of course, the executable of Saphir. The input file is here. So I click on run. And it will run for, I think, 900 seconds. Yes, and I have here diamond. I will open the file again. I have 2D terminal XML. It has been created just now. Okay. And I have the nodes, the solid, and uh, the frontiers, everything I know, and the temperatures if I want at different time steps. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Thank you very much.